We're about to crack this thing open. Show you what's inside. So, uh, yeah, buckle up. You buckled? All right, good. Yeah, just always wear your seatbelt. So today we're gonna be doing something that every single photography or video YouTuber has done at some point. That's right, it's the obligatory what's in my camera bag video. So of course, I wanna start out by talking about the actual bag. This is the Brevity Scout. I've had it for about maybe like six, eight months now. It's a great bag and I love it. And I made a separate video all about it. So that'll be in the description. There'll also be a card up here where you can watch that. And along with this bag, a lot of the things I'm talking about in this video, I've already made separate videos all about. So if you want some more information about them, I will link those in the description and try and use as many cards as I can to link you to those videos. Now, of course, I want to start out by talking about the camera I use, and unfortunately, I can't show it to you because it's not in the bag. I'm using it to film this video, but it is the Lumix G7 from Panasonic right there. Wow. It's not the best camera, doesn't shoot 120, doesn't do 4K 60, doesn't have the best color science, but it's only like $400. So if you consider the price, pretty great value. I will probably end up upgrading this pretty soon by the end of the year for sure, but so far I really just haven't seen any reason to upgrade it. Anything that would be worth the couple thousand dollars to get a new better camera over the past like year and a half that I've been using this. I carry around two lenses in my camera bag, the first of which is actually also the lens that I'm using to film this video, which is the Tokina 11-16 f2.8 right here. There you go. This is my go-to lens for wide angle shots and especially vlogging where I'm walking around talking to the camera just because it's such a wide angle and because it's f2.8, I can also get a little bit of shallow depth of field behind my face if I'm vlogging or if I'm filming something else, just kind of having that foreground out of focus. The other lens I use is actually in the bag, so we finally get to <laughs> actually open up the camera bag and it's in this little insert that the bag includes. So let's break that open, show you what's in there. The other lens I use to shoot travel videos and vlogs is this 45 millimeter f1.8 lens from Tamron. It's a great lens and it's what I use when I need a longer focal length with a bit more compression and shallow depth of field. Another thing I like about this lens is that it includes image stabilization. So it's good for just having that smooth handheld motion, which is something I use a lot in my videos. I don't really use a gimbal or a stabilizer or even a tripod that often to shoot. So it's good to have that option for just shooting handheld when you're on location. So considering that this is $400, same price as the other lens, I think it's a pretty great value. The only issue is that both of these lenses are made for Canon cameras. So I have to use an adapter to adapt them from that Canon mount to the Panasonic mount on my camera. To do this, I use a product called the Metabone Speed Booster. It's basically just a thing that allows you to put Canon lenses on a micro four thirds camera like Panasonic or Olympus, and also gives you a wider image and a shallower depth of field in the process. It's pretty pricey, it's about $650, but it is a really nifty, useful piece of gear to have. I also have a variable ND filter for each of these lenses. If you don't know what one of these is, it basically just darkens the image. People say it's like sunglasses for your camera. So as you can see here, we've got it darkening a little bit, and if you twist it, it just gets darker and darker until eventually it's pretty much solid black, blocking out most of the light that's coming into the lens. This is useful because it means that you don't have to raise your shutter speed in order to darken the image. So if you're shooting outdoors in bright sunlight or just in a brightly lit environment, you can still have your shutter speed at 1 50th of a second, which is pretty much always considered the best place to have it, the most natural looking place to have that shutter speed for shooting video. Quick side note, when I say 1 50th of a second is the best shutter speed for video, I just mean that for 20 four frames per second video. The best shutter speed to use is double your frame rate. So if you're shooting 60, please use 1 1 20th of a second, not 1 50th. That will not <laughs> come out looking very good. Another piece of gear that I keep in this insert here is my microphone. And this is the microphone that I'm using to record audio for this video right now. It's the Rode Video Micro. I made a separate video about it, but it's one of my favorite pieces of gear that I've ever purchased. It's an absolutely great value at $60. 
$60 for a microphone. But I also just like how small and portable it is. The fact that it includes a windscreen, just great. And the final piece of gear that I keep in this insert here is my drone. This is the case for it. This is the DJI Mavic Air, and I absolutely love this thing. It's just so small, easy to transport and use, is intuitive, and produces great footage for your videos. So if you're looking to get a drone for any kind of travel work or anything casual like a vlog, this is without a doubt the way to go just because of the combination of the size and the quality and flexibility of the footage that you get. If you look on top of that insert there, you'll see that I've got this separate case in here. This is basically just all of the accessories for the drone. So in here I have some cables and the replacement propellers in case you break those. Up top I've got a bunch of stuff in here, the controllers in here, a spare battery for the drone because it only flies for like 25, 30 minutes on a single battery. And finally, all the cords here to charge the drone. I do find it pretty difficult to justify the amount of space that the drone takes up in my camera bag and the amount of hassle it is to carry it around. But at the end of the day, I enjoy using the drone. So why not take it with me when I'm on a shoot? This bag also has a nice padded laptop sleeve at the back where I keep this 15 inch MacBook Pro. I've been using this for pretty much the entire year of 2019, really like it so far. I like the workflow of just being able to take my work anywhere, being able to edit in the car, on a train, on a plane, wherever. But a lot of the time I don't take this in my camera bag because I just don't wanna risk having it stolen, broken, lost, anything bad like that. Even though it is a bit risky, the advantage to having your laptop with you on a shoot like this is that you're able to immediately go and offload that footage that you shot and have it backed up immediately after the shoot. And if you're filming with someone else, you can go and be able to exchange footage without having to like send it via WeTransfer or something later and wait six hours on that to work. Now, because this laptop is a Mac, I have this entire pocket on the top dedicated pretty much entirely to accessories like dongles and chargers and adapters. In here I've got the charger, obviously my phone charger's in here too. In case I need that, there's also a couple of adapters like some little USB to micro USB adapters here and usually I have an SD and micro SD to USB-C in here as well for offloading that footage. And right below that there's another pocket right here and this is where I keep spare batteries. There's a battery for the camera here as well as another battery and the battery charger. And finally, in this cup holder part here, I have the Joby Gorillapod. And I'm still not sure about this thing. I definitely have a love-hate relationship with it. This is sometimes useful and you never know when it's gonna come in handy, but it's also just flimsy, like this one even needs replacing. I do definitely think that in the next couple months, I'm gonna switch from this to just a small, regular tripod. And finally, if I'm going out on a shoot and doing like a hike or something, I'll always put some water in the other side of the bag and like a protein bar or some kind of food in that top pocket. So yeah, not dying, definitely the way to go. I hope you've enjoyed this. And if you wanna see the list of all the gear I use, you can check out my kit page, which is linked in the description. That's basically just a big list of everything that's in my camera bag. And it's also got Amazon affiliate links there. So if you're interested and you wanna purchase something and you do it from that site, I will get a little bit of a kickback from that. And Jeff Bezos will hand deliver it to my door, which is pretty cool. But uh, that being said, that's him right now. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, all that. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Coming.